Welcome back to Pagan Valley, everyone. Tonight is the next episode of Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and oh boy, do I have an interesting subject for all of you. As a college student, I'm sometimes subjected to the various forms of student art projects. Projects that sometimes are beautiful and expressive, but a lot of art students' projects are kind of unique. There is a stereotype about art students and their works for a reason. Usually, it's because their piece of art is lacking any depth, but the artists explain its deeper meaning anyway. This leads to that weird, uncanny feel that defines the student art genre, which is easily mocked by both critics and a regular audience. That doesn't mean art students don't grow, because of course they do. Their skills get better, and they develop a style that sets them apart from other artists. That doesn't mean we as an audience can't go back and gawk at the trash fires they may have created during the process. What does this have to do with tonight's subject? Well, let's just say that she embodies this idea of an artist having their own style. With that being said, let me introduce to you a composer, filmmaker, songwriter, performer, vocalist, and choreographer, the imaginative and visionary Meredith Monk. I first learned of Meredith Monk while watching Red Letter Media on YouTube. In their 21st episode of their series Wheel of the Worst, the group reviewed an art film called Turtle Dreams. After tearing the art film to shreds, I was curious enough to find out who made the horrible movie. It turns out it was a performer in the film named Meredith Monk, who apparently composed the music and made the choreography that is shown in the strange film. In fact, the background footage and the music played at the beginning of this video is from that art film. Believing that this Turtle Dreams film was just a one-off ego project concocted by someone who thinks they know what art is, I dug further and before long I was reading entire biographies about this woman and her very unique art projects. Meredith Monk was born in 1942 in New York City. While her father was a businessman working in finance, Meredith's mother was a professional singer. In fact, her mother was actually a very popular singer at the time. Going by the stage name Audrey Marsh, Meredith's mother acted in radio shows for CBS. From a young age, Meredith had a passion for art. Soon, when she finished high school, both her parents supported her passion and sent her to Sarah Lawrence College, a private liberal arts school in Bronxville, New York. In 1964, Meredith would graduate and move back to New York City to begin building a name for herself in art circles. Early in her art career, Meredith created a couple art pieces to be displayed at small galleries around the city. Meredith's art would normally utilize music and stage performance. Meredith would compose and choreograph these small performances herself and present them to very small art audiences and festivals. For the time, I would describe these projects as experimental. In 1966, Meredith would have a breakout performance in her short film, 16mm Earrings. Now I have to throw up a quick copyright statement and filter the footage so YouTube doesn't make me cut the video before I show it, so just be aware that the short film is available on our website. This performance basically defines her style for the rest of her career. 16mm earrings is very surreal. It doesn't really have a narrative to it but it's not absent of substance. The most standout part about it is the music composed by Meredith. Her compositions in this are very soft and very repetitive. So for the majority of this 30 minute performance, the music uses the same measures over and over again. The visuals in this performance are pretty good as well. There are some scenes where magnification is used and it looks really cool. For 1966, this performance is really avant-garde, and there are some technical things that are pretty impressive 
but overall, it is quite odd. Its meaning is still lost on me, but I don't think it's completely absent of it. Two years later, Meredith would create a performance company called The House. This company would focus on more avant-garde art projects that incorporate different disciplines of performance, specifically disciplines that Meredith used in her hit piece, such as the obvious minimalist style used in her music composition, stage production, and choreography. But her success and fame would begin to falter after a decade. In 1979, Meredith recorded her first music album called Dolman Music. This is where um, the music in her work begins to bleed into annoyance. This album is hilariously bad, and without any visual medium, it is hard extrapolating any meaning from it. Clearly, someone must have told her this because she did not pursue this medium of art as much as others after its release. Speaking of probably her worst work, a year later, Meredith would perform the now infamous Turtle Dreams production. This art piece captures everything a random person would predict an art film would have. Barely any production, fucking terrible and annoying music, and any meaning being left at the door because of how distracting the movements of the performers are. I believe there's supposed to be some kind of meaning about the earth and life and how humans are maybe mocking nature. Again, it's hard to know what the intent was for this piece because it is so fucking awful to sit through. It feels like all of the charm from 16mm earrings was completely lost. After watching Turtle Dreams, I considered ending this video here so I didn't have to subject myself to this torture anymore. But I reminded myself about what I said at the beginning of this video. Is Meredith just bad at art? Or are these awful art pieces just growing pains while she gets better? Well, as you can tell by how far we are in the video, I'm not done talking about Meredith and her works yet but this is definitely the lowest part in Meredith Monk's story. In 1981, a small short film was made called Ellis Island. It included another original composition performed by Meredith using a piano. The music piece is very pleasant and is well incorporated with the footage of people arriving at Ellis Island. Overall, it was a calm, meaningful experience with a clear vision, and I was happy to find out that it won a couple awards as well. But finally, in 1990, Meredith Monk emerged from the Stark Age in her career and made a 75-minute movie called Book of Days. This movie actually has a story and a beautiful score which shocked me. I mean, it's not a masterpiece film. But it's nice, and it did prove to me that Meredith does have talent and knows how to make good music for her productions. I don't want to get hung up in the plot of this art film, but a simple synopsis is that a young Jewish girl in the 1300s can see the future. She tells people in her town like the rabbi, the old gypsy, and her family about future disasters, such as the AIDS epidemic and potential nuclear annihilation during which there are festival performances that are very fun and entertaining to watch. In 1992, Meredith would compose what is probably her best known work, which is her own opera called Atlas. Told in three parts, Atlas is loosely about the journey of self-discovery and looking into one's soul. The small orchestra music invokes this sense of adventure and exploration. I personally think the vocals and lyrics are pretty good in this opera, and yes, I did listen to all of it. I don't know if that is because I've seen operas before, or I'm just starting to lose my mind after all of these. Anyway, if you want to see any of Meredith's art pieces, 
Atlas is probably the most accessible for a regular audience. And for art pieces, this is probably the peak of her career. From short avant-garde films, to horrible stage performances, to a successful opera, I can definitely say Meredith Monk is an artist. Good or bad, I don't know anymore. I feel like I just got done running a marathon trying to watch her work. It's a mixed bag, and I believe most people probably would not enjoy it. Fortunately, she does have some influence in the entertainment world today. Besides just being the poster child for crazy, meaningless art films, Meredith Monk is renowned in avant-garde art circles. She also pioneered the genre of site-specific works, which have grown in popularity through the 2010s. And yes, I do have to mention that she has won a lot of awards, which are listed on her website. You probably want an example of this creative influence in the entertainment world. Well, I can show you one. The Big Lebowski, made in 1998, features a cameo of one of Meredith Monk's songs. But if you remember in the movie, when the dude first goes to Maud Lebowski's house, he walks down a hallway to a canvas, and then Maud flies in over his head throwing paint on it. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But the music in that scene was a song written by Meredith Monk. The Coen brothers who directed the movie even mentioned that they were poking fun at how ridiculous some art pieces are, while the artist insists on how deep in meaning they are. They also poke fun at this minimalist style of production Meredith is known for when the dude's landlord, Marty, has a solo performance, which mocks the avant-garde genre Meredith pioneered. It's a minor thing, but I thought it was important enough to mention since I love that movie. In 2021, Meredith Monk is now 78 years old and is still creating avant-garde performances in New York City. She still leads the House Company Foundation and has hosted several art galleries. There have even been a couple of documentaries made about Meredith and her strange works, so you can check them out if you would like. Also, Meredith wrote a short autobiography where even Meredith talks about how Turtle Dreams and Dolman music almost ended her career. Now she had to overcome what critics were saying about her. All these things are available on her website. Overall, Meredith Monk's talent is unquestionable. However, I feel like her failures have made her more famous in pop culture than her successes, which is the main reason, after all this research, that I wanted to make her a subject on Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Hopefully more people will see this video over time and check out some of her work because I know I wouldn't want to be remembered for my worst project. Is she weird? Yes. Is some of her work fucking terrible? Yes. Is all of her work mildly entertaining, good or bad? Absolutely. Meredith Monk is a story of weirdness, creativity, and above all, resiliency against her detractors. And that is what Over the Cuckoo's Nest is all about. But what do you think about Meredith Monk? Do you like any of her art? Let me know what you think in the comments. And make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more content. And with that, this has been Pagan Valley, and I'll see you all in the next one.